But what a song. It's, isn't it really fantastic? You know, one of the things I, I really appreciate about their hymns of the church are the way that they're able to lift the rafters. I remember uh, sitting with uh, my good wife uh, one time, I think it was in Westminster Abbey, and we had the uh, opportunity to go and, uh, and just listen to, uh, I think it was Vespers. Uh, and the music, uh, Grace, everything that, you, that they had there, you've got here. Um, I want you to imagine that you're sitting in Westminster Abbey uh, at, the, uh, at the present uh, time. Uh, now, look, folks, we'd like to have a really big welcome uh, to the Ambassador's Choir. A welcome. It is so good to have you here so close to Christmas. Do you know how hard it is to be able to get people to come together this close to uh, uh, this close to Christmas and uh, uh, thank you so much for for coming. Uh, welcome to Christmas 2022. Can you believe that another year has already uh, run its uh, run its course? Uh, welcome to church members. Welcome to our community members. You know, I'm, I, I'm really conscious that uh, we do have quite a number of community members here tonight. Uh, thank you so much for coming and joining with us. It's lovely uh, to welcome you into our uh, church. Can I just ask a question? How many of you are currently on holidays? Ah, yeah, good, good. How many of you, today is the first day of holidays? Yes, yes, we've got some of the boys and girls putting up their, big, uh, their hands as well. T tell me something. How many of you are not on holidays but are exhausted anyway? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's quite amazing how this time of the year is able to exhaust even the fittest, uh, the fittest people been an amazing year, hasn't it? Do you know, as I look back on uh, 2022, uh, I am just so conscious of some of the events that have taken place. You know, right back there in February, we had uh, Russia uh, invading Ukraine, and that's been on our telly screens the whole, uh, the whole year. We had Queen Elizabeth uh, passed away and a brand new king uh, go to the uh, throne. Also, just a month or two back, we had our 8 billionth person join planet Earth. It's been a year of change. Here in Australia, of course, right now we're dealing with the, with the floods. And I know there are uh, some of our, our friends who are uh, dealing with that, uh, that issue right, uh, right now. Do you know, what are we doing here tonight? The thing which we would like to do is just praise God. We're conscious that this is the Christmas season. We're conscious that this is a season where many people remember the birth of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what we want to do tonight. We want to remember the birth of Jesus Christ and all it means to us. It is wonderful to have you come and join with us. I'm Pastor Gary. I'm the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here at, uh, here at Brighton. Folks, just if I could just make a couple of announcements. Uh, firstly, if you could just check that your mobile phone is, uh, is turned off, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you need the toilets, look, the easiest way to get to the toilets is actually just out this uh, door here into the foyer. Go outside is probably the easiest way to the door at the very end and that will lead you through to the, uh, to the toilets. So, folks, let's bow our heads together in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you right now. We want to say thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, thank you for being the creator. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ. Thank you for what this season does actually cause us to remember. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be here with us tonight as we share together. We ask, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.
The people who walked in the darkness have seen great light. Those who dwelled in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In the sixth month, the, God, uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will come the storm? In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be registered each to his own town. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was on the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they went, were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and led him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filling with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly, there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on the earth peace among those with whom he is pleased.
when the angels went away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherd told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. I'd like to say a really, a really big thank you to ambassadors for all that they've presented this evening. A fantastic amount of work. Thank you, um, Grace, for pulling all of that together. You know, the Christmas season, 
wouldn't be complete without a, a short word from the, from the scriptures. It's probably the passage of scripture that is best known anywhere in the Christian world. Even people outside of Christianity know this particular verse of, of scripture. It's found in John chapter 3, verse, verse 16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved that he gave. What a passage of scripture. Think of it. God. You know, so many think of God the Father as mean and vindictive, as somebody who can't wait for a person to do something wrong. That was the view of God the Father in the Middle Ages. There's so many today who see the God of the Old Testament in exactly the same way. But that's not what this passage of Scripture says. For God, it's referring to the Father, for God so loved the world that he gave. He loved. He loved the world. What does that actually mean? You know, we live in a world today that tries to specialise in love. It, Hollywood thinks it understands love. But, you know, it's in the, the Christian scriptures that actually defines love, I believe, in the best possible way. It's actually found by, in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13. And uh, it's the great apostle Paul that defines what love is all about. Just think of what's being said here. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. It doesn't parade itself. It's not puffed up. And doesn't behave rudely, doesn't think its own, it's not provoked, it thinks no evil, it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Where there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there's knowledge, it will vanish away. For now we know in part and prophesy in part. And now abide three things. Faith, hope and love. But the greatest of them is love. You see that uh, verse uh, back in chapter 3, John chapter 3 and, uh, and verse 16. For God so loved. What sort of love was it? It's the love that is defined by Paul in 1 Corinthians 13. That's how he loves you and me. But you know, the text doesn't stop there. For God so loved, God the Father, the one who is seen by so many as mean and vindictive, so loved, not in the way that our world loves, but in the way that's defined by Paul. Our God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Generosity, giving. Do you know we're at Christmas time? This is the season for giving. According to the word of God, the master giver is the one in heaven. God the Father, who gave his own son. My friends, many of us here are parents. Would you give your son, your daughter, as a little baby to the wiles of this world? You know, as I think of that, I think how generous our God really has been. The word of God, for God... He acted. He loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. You know, my friends, I, I just pray that 
at this time of the year when generosity and giving is highlighted, that we also might give our hearts to the God of heaven because that is his appeal at this time. Thank you so much, Praise. May God bless you. We're going to finish with a prayer, but the prayer is going to come in the form of music. May God richly bless each of you.
you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Grace, thank you, ambassadors. That is that is so so good. Look, we do need to uh, get you get you back here again. I mean, find Christmas time. Uh, being prepared to give up your, your time. Thank you so much uh, for being prepared to come across here to, to Brighton Church and to share with uh, with us. Folks, that does bring our, our program this evening uh, to a conclusion. But we do have, uh, out in the hall, we do have a wonderful uh, meal. It's uh, I think it's uh, some some curry made by some of our Indian Indian folks that would love to actually be able to share share with you. So look, if you would like uh, to uh, uh, to be able to, uh, if you've got time to stay and uh, just share with us, we'd love to have you come and join with us. Uh, this is this is a wonderful meal. I just uh, um, asked. Um, uh, our, our cook to uh, to please come and teach me how to uh, uh, how to uh, produce this uh, this type of food. It really is is tremendous. Uh, guys, if you'd like to come and join with us, uh, we uh, we'd love to have you come and join with us in the in the hall. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining with us. Uh, thank you so much for blessing us with your attendance, and we really look forward uh, to you uh, perhaps joining us again. Uh, next uh, next year. May God richly bless you. Mm -hmm.